Hey everybody, welcome back. It's time for another generator video. I had a lot of questions after my first one, which I'll put a link to at the end of this video, uh, about different questions about generators, such as, you know, how, how long will it run on a certain amount of gas? How much gas do I need to store? How do I store gas? So we're gonna cover all that today. And also, something that prompted me is the situation going on in California, which PG&E has said they're gonna cut off power to 800,000 people in central and in northern California. Just some quick thoughts on that. This is something they should have been prepared for ahead of time. And if you're gonna sit there and just blame whoever's in the White House, Trump or Obama, whoever, then you really need to set all that aside and start thinking about what's going on in, in your own state, in your own location, about the policies you have in place. And some people are probably thinking, well, how the heck do our policies have anything to do with a power company shutting off power? Well, a lot of it's due to wildfires, and that's due to, you know, the severity of the wildfires is a large part due to mismanagement of your forestry. You need to have a different policy in place for forestry management in relation to, you know, cutting uh, fire breaks, fire paths, clear cutting, you know, undercut brush and down trees. As of right now, nobody can really touch anything because they leave it all to nature. And that's what happens. You'll get severe fires and you need to realize that, that some of your policies are, are really going to be harmful to you. And also, you really need to look at your water management policies because you're going to have some real problems coming ahead with that too. So, uh, it's, it's not a political issue. So, you, if you take it that way, uh, you're sick and I can't help you. So, um, what we're going to do today is, of course, we have the three, same three generators here. We have the 3,000 watt one, the red one there, which is uh, big enough to run... You know, a lot of things in your home yet not big enough so big it's going to use a lot of gas so we're going to put a gallon of gas in that one I, I measured out the gas for these so it's exact the orange one there the 8000 watt generac put a gallon of gas in that that is big enough to run your whole home whatever you want to do it's a real good solution that has electric start so if you're you know have problems pull starting things that'd be real handy for you and then the little 2,000 watt Honda there. I only put a, a half gallon of gas in there because I put a gallon of gas in it. It's going to run till tomorrow morning and, and I don't really need to drag this out. So we're going to time this out and see how long they run. And then I have some ideas on you know, how to manage things. Also here, we're going to talk quick about, well, incidentally, now's a good time to look at generators. I was just in a, a hardware store today and everything seems to be on sale. So, and also don't skimp on extension cords. Have five or 10, you know, 50 footers, 100 footers, 25 footers. Mix it up a little bit for different, you know, purposes. Sorry about the wind. It's, it's a cold day here today. We had our first snow last night here in the upper Midwest. So it's a cold, windy day. It's about 30 degrees. So before we start those, Let's talk about storing gasoline. If you watch garage sales and rummage sales, you can pick these gas cans up really cheap. This is a five gallon one. This can get pretty heavy for, for some people. So you can also get one gallon. This is a two gallon. I've seen them smaller than this with a half gallon. So there's quite a variety. Uh, you can you know find them at rummage sales, like I said, sometimes for two to five dollars. This five gallon one in the store is about twenty dollars. Uh, once you have them, you have them. So <clears throat> get yourself as many as you can afford. Twelve is ideal. Whatever size. Something is better than nothing. Take a black magic marker and either number the cans one through twelve, January through December. And the reason for that is we're going to rotate them. So you're going to fill up all these cans as, as you budget for it, as you can afford it. It's not going to go to waste, so don't worry about that. Um, and then line them up, you know, 1 through 12, whatever. And at the end of the first month, 
say you're starting in January, grab the first can if you haven't used it in your whatever small engine, you dump it into your vehicle. It's the same gas as your car takes. And you refill it, put it back at the end of the line. The next month you grab the next can. You didn't use it, put it in your car, fill it back at the end of the line. So you're, you're constantly rotating the gas, so it's never going to get old. It's not going to go to waste. And something else to think about is, you know, the, the gas will keep for a year if you treat it right. You're going to get some kind of fuel stabilizer. This is seafoam. That's pretty popular. There's this stable, which is some people say it's good. Some people say it's no good. And in my opinion, the, probably the best one out there is called PRI. I don't have any to show you here today, but it's a, it's a really good fuel stabilizer. And I'm not big on keeping a bunch of gas cans inside of a hot garage, the uh, potential for a problem there. So find a place to keep them outside, stash them somewhere, whatever. Uh, you don't want to, uh, you know, if you live in Phoenix or whatever, you don't want to have one explode from the 120 degree heat and burn your house down. So now with the gas cans, I don't have one here to show you, but the newer ones, this is also probably, I think, a product of California. I'm pretty sure it started there. Have the environmental, environmentally friendly spouts on them, which I don't know how it's environmentally friendly because you're going to spill more gas with the darn thing than you're going to get in the whatever you're trying to pour it in. There's a way to fix that. I'm not going to show you on this video. You can YouTube it, look on some other video because uh, I'm pretty sure it's illegal. And these are all, by the way, legal gas cans just older style and I don't want the department of making people sad coming here and arresting me that's the department right next door to the department of I can't mind my own damn business one floor down from the department of I'm gonna steal all your money so you're probably familiar with all that so what I'm gonna do now is start the generators I'm gonna start the clock on a timer see how long they run done we'll evaluate the fuel com consumption per hour now it's it's going to be a little lower than if you have stuff plugged into it because as you put a load on them they use a little more fuel the Honda is an eco throttle which means it can have the load sensing throttle which will adjust the automatically or if you turn that off it'll just run wide open for the sake of this experiment I'm going to run it wide open and we'll be back afterwards and I have some thoughts and ideas on how to manage things to lower your fuel consumption and stuff like that so I'm gonna get these started real quick Still chugging away here. Hey, so I'm back here um, with the results of our experiment. I'm doing this inside because uh, it's snowing like crazy outside and cold, windy. It's our first snowfall of the year, so not really ready to deal with all that. Um, I had kind of, kind of some surprising results here that I didn't expect. Oh, before we get into this, um, just wanted to say if, if you have it available. I always use non-ethanol gas in, in all your small engines, including the generators here. It's uh, not as hard on the carburetor, especially if you're going to store it with gas in it. They say the ethanol can cause that carburetor to varnish and, and kind of get gummed up in there. So if that's an option, do that. And when you, If you have to dump it in your car, don't worry. It will not hurt your vehicle unless you have some kind of new vehicle that I don't know about. Um, anyway... Let's start here. We'll start with the Generac, the 8,000 watt Generac, because I was a little not disappointed, but I guess disappointed in, in its performance. On one gallon of gas, it ran for three hours and 12 minutes. So it's a little over a third of a gallon per hour. But that's a really big generator, and that uh, you can get a lot done with that. So if you have the need, 
maybe you have uh, one thing too maybe you have animals you got to take care of you have a small hobby farm or or whatever they need to eat they need water so you need to be able to pump water and you'll need a, a bigger generator for that so don't ever forget your pets uh, you know some people are so quick to uh, not give a damn about people but they seem to be really concerned about animals which I love animals too so keep that in the back of your mind so next the Honda I guess I shouldn't really be surprised at how well it performed because uh, uh, it's my favorite generator but on a half a gallon of gas, remember we only put a half a gallon in that one. So I'm reading off my notes here. It ran for 4 hours and 25 minutes. So if you doubled that to a gallon, that would give you 8 hours and 50 minutes. Round it off to 9 hours. That's pretty darn economical. And remember, that's with the throttle wide open. If you put that thing on eco throttle, it's you may double that. Maybe not double it. Even if you went another 50%. You know, 13 hours and one gallon of gas is pretty darn economical. So, the the 3,000 watt Pro Force went for four hours and 55 minutes on one gallon of gas. Now that one I was surprised. I did not expect that kind of economy out of out of that generator. You know, a little bigger like that. So, <clears throat> one thing you got to remember that you don't need these generators running 24 hours a day you're basically looking to keep your refrigerator cold and your freezer you know if you have a chest freezer you don't want to lose all that food and then you know if the powers aren't you're not going to have any cable TV to watch anyway the internet's going to be down so there's not a lot else uh, here so one strategy is really only if you're looking to do that you really only need to run it about one hour out of every five that'll cool your food back down keep everything from spoiling if you want to turn it on to watch a movie in a dvd player or whatever that's that's really nice where that honda comes into play it's plenty big for all that <clears throat> even you know your refrigerator and freezer so just to talk about the economy of it a little bit more so the 2000 watt honda about 0.11 gallons per hour if you run it one out of every five hours that's 0.55 gallons a day so a little over a half a gallon a day now if you run it one hour out of every five and you have one of the, just one of those five gallon gas cans that's nine days worth of gas worth of keeping your food good and keeping you alive. I don't know if you're right. I have to have a CPAP or whatever. Um, it's nine days worth of gas for five gallons. What is it? Wherever you live. Three bucks and fifteen, twenty dollars at the most. So it's practically as cheap as the power from your power company. So you can't really go wrong there. The, the 3000 watt Proforce is roughly 0.2 gallons per hour you would be run it one hour out of every five that's a gallon a day basically so five gallons would get you five days worth of power which is pretty substantial and that generator is big enough you know you can run a lot more off it so when you break this down in the how economical it is it's all the more reason to do it and you know, if, if the power's out, you're not going to be able to pump gas. So if you have to drive 100 miles to fill up your gas cans, you take three of them along, bring them home. You know, with the Honda, that's 30 days worth of electricity for, you know, three five-gallon gas cans. And if you store them like I showed you to, you won't even have to do that. Because one day you're going to turn on your faucet and no water is going to come out after, you know, the municipalities run out of fuel for their generators you know when the, the water towers go dry you're not gonna have water either so consider some kind of water storage food storage everything really well and two talking about traveling for gas in your car I'll make a video here shortly on how to use your car to power your your home your refrigerator freezer 
you know, whatever you need to use, but it's not exactly very economical. You'd have $100, $150 into getting it set up, but it lets your car sit and run in your driveway. It burns way more gas than you need to, and letting the vehicle sit there idling isn't exactly great for it. So, but in a pinch, it's a darn good and practical solution. So consider all these things. And I wanted to break it down so you can see how economical it is just to provide yourself a little bit of security and safety. And it doesn't have to be California. You, know, you could live in southern Texas, Phoenix, Tucson, where it's scorching hot. And if your power goes out, you know, especially the elderly can die from the heat really quick. And <clears throat> that being said, start looking at how fragile our power grid system is. It's, it's ridiculous. It is so outdated and so stressed that this is inevitable to happen. It's going to happen. So I hope that you consider all these things and take some inexpensive steps to prepare for yourself and your family. So I hope this video helped you out. <clears throat> Hit that like button, subscribe, and I'd, I'd love to answer any questions you might have. I'm no expert, but I'd like to think I can you know, help help you out, at least get started. you got to start somewhere. Uh, something is better than nothing. So, All right. Have a great night.